Hey y'all, welcome to today's video. My name is Julie and in today's video we are making some beef bone broth and we are also making some turkey broth. I had a turkey carcass left over and I didn't want it to go to waste. I had it left over from Thanksgiving. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get these beef soup bones and that's what it says on there. Y'all see it? Beef soup bones. <laughs> but y'all, I've never seen my soup bones like this. Now I do see there is a couple of really big hard bones um, in both of these. This one's a lot smaller, but I've never seen soup bones um, with this much beef around them. I'm just going to go with it. She did say these do have the marrow and you know all of the nutritional benefits that you need in it. I've never seen it this small. She, she even said, I've never seen them cut it like this before. Um, she said, so I'm not really sure why they did it like that, but because I've already got these, um, thawed, I, I need to go ahead and get them going instead of, she said they're about to process two or three more cows. Did I want to just wait? And I said, well, I'm already here because it's not in my hometown. I have to drive to get this. So I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to start with these and just get whatever broth I can get out of these. She said, I'll call you when we get some more in and let you know if they are cut differently. I said, please. I said, because I don't know. I mean, I am looking for the nutritional benefits of bone broth in the marrow and everything. And I do see that that's in there. So we're just going to go with it. First thing I'm going to do is cut these open and get these in the oven because you want to, you want to have these um, roast in the oven for about, I don't know, maybe about 10 minutes or just maybe even longer depending on your <clears throat> oven because you want them to roast and get really like brown before you start simmering them in a crock pot or anything like that. So that's all I'm going to do is just get this on here and get these in the oven and I'll show y'all what they look like once they come out of the oven. I dropped this one, put this one back on there. So you can see this is, it says a beautiful bone here with the marrow and all will be in that. So I'm just going to get these roasted. I'm probably going to put a little bit of olive oil or yeah, probably olive oil on these just so that they um, roast really well. So I'm going to get these in the oven and then I'll show y'all the next step. So I have the beef in the oven and I'm going to time it. I'm going to put about five minutes on it so that I can flip it in five minutes and just kind of check the color and make sure it's caramelized. But I wanted to show y'all, this is why I save my vegetable scraps. So I don't know if you can tell, I'll just pull these out of the freezer. But this is some celery bits, some onion bits, um, onion peels. I'm going to use these in this broth today. You don't have to do this, but I find that the flavor is really good if you do. And I just want y'all to look down in there. So this is what I do with a lot of the um, organic scraps that I get off my carrots, onions, and celery. I just put it in this bag. Now I won't use this whole bag today. I might use like half of it, but I do the same thing. I'll come and grab out of this bag for if I'm doing chicken stock or bone broth out of chicken bones. Anyway, so it's a really good idea to just get you a freezer bag and start it in, in your freezer. So anytime you have a handful of scraps, you can just go add to it. Um, I actually think I have some organic broccoli in there, an organic broccoli stem that I threw in there. So there's like the bottom piece of a big chunk of celery. So anyway, I'm just going to dump some of this in there when I pull the bones out and add them to the crock pot. I'll add these as well as some organic garlic and I just throw this all in their hole because you're going to be straining it in the end anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that out because um, it shouldn't take these bones but about 15 maybe 20 minutes to just roast in the oven because you're not really trying to cook them or do the bone broth in the oven. You're really just trying to get the meat nice and caramelized before you start the whole simmer process in the crock pot or on your stove however you're going to do it. Okay so these are straight out of the oven and it was about 15 minutes. It was about seven or eight minutes on one side and then once I flipped them this way it did not take near as long. But look at that beautiful, can y'all see that beautiful color. So now these 
are about to go in the slow cooker. Just trying to pull one up closer where y'all could see it a little better. So now I'm just gonna take these and place them in my crock pot. All right, and a lot of the juice that was on this pan, I feel like is that olive oil and just some juice from the meat, but I don't think I'm gonna save any of that because it does have a lot of that olive oil in it. And since I am gonna be canning this, um, I don't want all that in there. So, got this in here. Now all I'm gonna do is add some of those vegetables that I talked about. I'm just gonna dump some of this in there. I don't want two broccoli things in there. Not a whole lot, just a little bit, just trying to flavor it. And I will be straining all of this, so it's not a big deal that if there's peels and all that, and I'm gonna put all that garlic in there. I didn't even chop it up. I just peeled the outer layer. I'm gonna throw that in there. And then I'm gonna cover this with water. This is kind of like just how I do my chicken stock, except for having to um, brown caramelize the meat a little bit. So let me get this covered with some water. And I'm just covering all of the meat with water. I'll probably go to right here. A little bit more. Add a splash of this apple cider vinegar in there. This just helps draw all of the nutrients out of the bones. If I can get it open. And I just do a big, let me just do measurements for y'all. Probably about a tablespoon and a half. Not much. This is a smaller crock pot. I'm just kind of move things around so you can just kind of stir that apple cider vinegar in good and that's it I'm literally gonna put the lid on this put it in the crock pot base and cook this on low for at least 24 hours I'll meet back up with y'all then Okay, I also wanted to share that in another crock pot, I have a turkey carcass left over from Thanksgiving, and I'm using that to make some turkey stock or some turkey broth, I should say. So while I've got everything out and I'm in the process of canning the beef stock, I thought, why not go ahead and do another crock pot with the turkey carcass and make some turkey stock? All right, so it's pretty late now when we got home. I went to babysit grandkids, and it took me longer than anticipated. But so this turkey stock has been going for probably 28 almost 30 hours you really don't you really don't want to let it go any longer than that so even though it's almost 11 o'clock at night <laughs> i'm going to strain this and let it cool completely down so that i can get the broth in the refrigerator and work on canning everything tomorrow so i'm going to strain this and i'll meet back up with y'all tomorrow Here's what the broth looks like strained once. And I think I'm gonna strain this again because I can still, I mean, what did I just say? I'm so tired. I've strained this once. I think I'm gonna strain it again. That's what I meant to say. Um, because I can see little pieces of turkey in there. So I'm gonna let this sit in the refrigerator, like I said, overnight. And then in the morning, I'm gonna skim off any fat off the top. And I will just probably throw the majority of that away because that's not something I really want to cook with or anything like that because this is not organic non-gmo and all that but I will use the stock for cooking um, different things like I don't know whatever I need chicken stock for I can use the turkey stock but I do see bits of meat in there and I don't really want that in my stock so tomorrow I might put a cheesecloth over the metal strainer here and strain this even better but for tonight it's gonna cool completely and go in the fridge. Okay, so I thought I was filming, but I wasn't. I was gonna show y'all what it looked like all cooked in the crock pot in the juice and everything, but it was not recording, so I do apologize about that. But all I did is I let it cook on low for probably about 26 hours. And then I took and strained all of the meat, the bones, the onions, and all of that that I put in there. All I did was put that through a fine mesh strainer and poured it in these bowls. So that's all I've done. That's all you've missed. Um, so now I, I let this drain for a little while here. And then I just put it over here to cool because I am going to pick some of this meat off tomorrow that's in here that was all around those bones and make us probably some beef stroganoff or beef and rice with gravy or something like that. But I wanted to show you how beautiful this beef stock is. As you can see, it's kind of getting a little bit of the 
um, fat on top. I, I don't want to skim it right now because I don't want to get any of the juice off. So, like if I tried to skim this right now, I could, but I think I'm going to wait. So, you can kind of try to get it like that, but I don't want to, and look, look at, it kind of looks like jelly does when you make it. That's what you want. That's when you know that the that it's good um, when you've truly got some bone broth. So what I'm gonna do is let this cool off to room temperature. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator overnight and that will allow the, the film of fat to be on the top and I'll be able to scrape it off a little easier. And because this is grass-fed organic beef, I will save the fat that, that I take off of the top. I'll skim it off and put it in a jar and you can use that to cook with. I wouldn't do that with just regular beef. I would make sure it was like grass fed, organic fed beef that you're doing that with. But anyway, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator overnight and then I'll meet back up with y'all tomorrow to show you how I'm gonna skim that tallow or that beef fat off or you know, it'll be tallow at that point. And then um, I'll save that, put it in a jar. And then we're gonna can this up and preserve it by pressure canning it so that I can have some shelf stable beef broth at my fingertips when I want it. Okay, so I just pulled the that beef out of the refrigerator. I let it sit in there. Actually, it's been in there a couple days. Um, got busy, but it needs to get canned up. And I wanted to show you how the fat separates and just kind of floats to the top. So this is really good. Um, tallow right here because this is from organic grass-fed beef so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little strainer and I'm going to make sure I strain all the broth off of this I don't want a lot of fat in my um, stock because it can cause your lids not to seal if you're canning now if I was just putting this in the freezer I might leave a little bit more of this in there but because I'm wanting to can it I don't want that grease to try to kind of siphon up and keep my seals from sealing really good. So let me get something to put this, strain this tallow. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna get my electric canner going. There's a line in my electric canner. It's, I think it's about three quarts of water for pressure canning. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my water in here. So this can be warming up and I need just a little bit more. This has to go through a cycle of like warming up and stuff. And you can put your jars in here and um, warm them up too instead of, I'm, I'm so used to just doing it in a sink. I still haven't got used to being able to do it in here. But because this broth, oh, let me put y'all back down. But because this broth is cold and I don't want to go, I don't want to heat it back up and have to mess up another pot or and all that. I'm just going to leave this water in here cold. I did um, wash my jars. I'm about to pull them out of the sink and let them kind of come to room temperature. Or I'm going to rinse them like in, I've sanitized them in hot soapy water, but now I'm going to rinse them in cold water just so that my jars are cold, my broth is cold, my water in my canner is cold. So everything will go in here um, cold and all warm up at the same time. I don't want to bust any jars, so that's why I'm going to do it all cold. So let me get this strained real quick and bring my jars over. All right, and I am gonna add a splash of white vinegar just so my jars will come out clean. That's a, something you can do in your canner. So add a little splash of vinegar um, to keep your jars clean. So now, with my clean jars over here, I'm gonna dump out any extra water from rinsing them. And then get these filled up and ready for the canner. I'm just gonna use this little thing here to help me out. All right, so I'm gonna get my stock in my jars, leaving one inch of headspace. I don't know if I'll need this many jars, but I went with pints just because sometimes, and this is very like concentrated, it's a very rich broth. So I could add water to this and still have a very good um, stock if I'm you know, making a soup or a roast or anything like that. So trying to get it to that one inch headspace mark there. And I'm just keep doing that. I'm going to keep filling up all my jars and get these in the canner. All right. Now, I was. Here is the turkey stock um, that I made. Turkey broth. And the process is pretty much the same as far as canning it. But I wanted to show you what it looked like. Where's my spoon? 
So it's the same thing. The fat has kind of came to the top, but I was going to try to can all this together, but I got five pints of beef broth and I know I'm going to have more than that of the turkey broth. So I'm just, I'm just going to wait and process the beef together, the tar turkey, excuse me, together. They have the same processing time, so it wouldn't really matter if I did them together but I'm just gonna do it separate. I'm afraid I'll only be able to fit one or two more pints in there. And maybe I should because what if I have too many of the turkey and then I have to run a third batch? I don't know, let me think about that. But anyway, here's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna take some of that vinegar, put it on a clean paper towel, and you're gonna wipe these rims very good. I don't know if y'all can tell, but there's stuff splattered on here and there's a lot of grease involved in this with the fat and all dripping. So make sure the rims of your jars are cleaned really good before you place your lids on there. Move your paper towel around a little bit, get you a little more vinegar if you need to. The vinegar will cut the grease is why you use the vinegar. So I'm going to get these really clean. And you, I should have done this first. Normally you would like, you know, get bubbles out if you needed to, but this is liquid. So, but I wanted to show you, you needed one inch of headspace. And here's the one inch thing here that I use. But I also know just by looking on the jar. But you can get you a handy little tool if you're not real familiar with, um, you know, being able to tell on the jars. So now we're just going to place our new lids on here. And our bands. Just finger tight. Don't want it to be too tight. But you don't want to just sit it on there. Just finger tight. That's all you need. And I'm going to get these in the canner and get these processing. And I might go ahead and add a couple of pints of the turkey just in case. I'm gonna go ahead and just fill the canner up. I should probably be what I should do. Um, and I'll just know where I placed the turkey stock in here when I pull it out. I'll know that's what that is. So, all right, let me get these jars in the canner. I still have space for three more pints. So I'm gonna go ahead and utilize that space and get some turkey broth canned in there with that. Just so I'm not having to run a whole third batch if it's unnecessary um, to do that, I'd like to go ahead and eliminate that. So let me go ahead and get three more pints in here. All right, and just in case you're curious where I'm getting my information from on the times and different things like that, I use this book right here. So this is an awesome book for someone wanting to learn how to can. It has so much information in it. It's wonderful. So here's how everybody looks in here. I have all the beef back here and right there and then these three are the turkey. So I'll know which is which when I take the lid off so I can label them after they come out. Alright y'all, here is all this beautiful broth. It is the next morning. Everything has sealed. I just need to wipe the jars and take these off. But I wanted to show you. You can tell it's sealed by this and I always test it by picking it up by the ring. And I don't store mine with the rings off. I mean with the lid. You can test it with the lid is what I meant. It's still early. But this is the beautiful beef broth. Let me get it to focus. beautiful um, and then this is the turkey stock so I'm super excited I got two four six eight ten all together so not bad for the turkey stock you know it was just the the bones and the you know basically the leftovers that people normally throw away I turned into five pints of beautiful broth for cooking later All right, I hope that y'all enjoyed hanging out in the kitchen with me today, making some beef bone broth and some turkey stock. We hope that y'all have a wonderful week. We love y'all and I'll see you really soon with a brand new video.